Please be seated. As Dean at the Divinity School, it is my joyful task on behalf of the faculty, the staff, the students, the entire community of the Divinity School to welcome you, graduates, family members, friends, and current students to this special graduation ceremony in the Divinity School held in conjunction with the 532nd convocation of the University of Chicago. William Rainey Harper, the first president of the University of Chicago and a biblical scholar who uh, belonged in the Divinity School, uh, was insistent upon the quarter system rather than semesters because he couldn't stand to see the classrooms empty in the summer. Until recently at the University of Chicago, our practice was to celebrate four graduations per year, one at the end of each quarter, conferring degrees upon students from all schools and divisions. As a consequence, we're now at the 532nd convocation, which makes us sound as old as Oxford, Salamanca, or Paris. We're not quite that old, but we do have traditions that we hold dear, and one of our dearest is this special ceremony that we hold to honor our graduates and to celebrate their well-earned, their hard-earned accomplishments. We're glad to see you all here at this auspicious moment. Joining me today at the podium are members of the Divinity School faculty and the broader university faculty. I'm pleased to introduce them. Please, please stand when I say your names. Uh, Daniel Arnold, Associate Professor of the Philosophy of Religions, Divinity School and the College. Catherine Breckis, Charles Warren Professor of the History of Religion in America, Harvard University, but formerly of the Divinity School. Welcome back. Simeon Chevelle, Associate Professor of Hebrew Bible. Bruce, uh, Curtis Evans, Associate Professor of American Religions and the History of Christianity. Sarah Fredericks, Assistant, but really Associate, she's just been promoted, Professor of Environmental Ethics and Director of Doctoral Studies. Andreas Glazer, Associate Professor, Department of Sociology. Kevin Hector, Associate Professor of Theology and of the Philosophy of Religions. Dwight Hopkins, Alexander Campbell Professor of Theology. Cynthia Gano Lindner, Director of Ministry Studies and Clinical Faculty for Preaching and Pastoral Care. Francoise Meltzer, Professor of the Philosophy of Religions and Distinguished Service Professor in the Humanities, Chair of the Department of Comparative Literature. Richard Miller, Laura Spellman Rockefeller Professor of Religious Ethics. Margaret M. Mitchell, Shaler Matthews Distinguished Service Professor of the New Testament and Early Christian Literature. Wilhelmine Otten, Professor of Theology and the History of Christianity. James Robinson, Caroline E. Haskell Professor of History of Judaism, Islamic Studies, and the History of Religion. Richard Rosengarten, Associate Professor of Religion, Literature, and Visual Culture. Ahmed El Shamsi, Associate Professor of Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations. William Schweiker, Edward L. Ryerson, Distinguished Service Professor of Theological Ethics. And Jeffrey Stackert, Director of MA Studies and Associate Professor of Hebrew Bible. It's my special pleasure to introduce my colleague, Joshua Feigelson, Dean of Students in the Divinity School, who will add his words of greeting. Thank you, Dean Nirenberg, and welcome to our graduates, uh, your families, friends, and loved ones on this very special day. I join with uh, Dean Nirenberg and all of our faculty and staff and the many people who have supported you on your journey in celebrating with you as together we mark this major milestone in your life. You have each worked hard and diligently to arrive at this day and we are all so very proud of your accomplishments. I encourage you to savor the moment. In the spirit of gratitude that animates us today, I want to add that many people uh, have given of their time and talents to make this ceremony possible. And in particular, uh, I want to thank my colleagues in the Dean of Students Office, uh, America Huckabee and Associate Dean of Students, and De Anita Lumpkin, 
uh, as well as Associate Dean Suzanne Riggle, Assistant Dean Sarah Bigger, Barbara Palmer Bostic, Taryn Wine, Madison McClendon, Irema Halilovich, uh, and Erica Dornfeld, who have all been instrumental in arranging the many details of today's events. To our graduates, at this time of celebration, I invite you to pause and reflect on the people, many of whom I hope are here with you today, who have enabled you to reach this moment. They may include parents and grandparents, uncles and aunts, partners and spouses and children, friends and classmates, teachers and mentors and advisors, and the many others from librarians to service workers to the staff at Grounds of Being who have nourished and sustained you and who have constituted this incredibly rich community. The ability to express gratitude is its own form of blessing, and today on this momentous and joyous occasion, I hope you will find moments to say thank you. So for my part, thank you for spending these months and years with us, for contributing your words and your presence to our life and community in Swift Hall. Everyone here, from the faculty and administration of the Divinity School to your friends and family, delight in your success and cannot wait to see the amazing ways you will continue to illuminate the world. Again, welcome and congratulations. Thank you, Dean Fagelson. The Divinity School has been the graduate professional school for the academic study of religion at the University of Chicago since its founding in 1891. The school educates students in the profession of studying and speaking in an intelligent, knowledgeable, critical, rigorous, and honestly engaged way about religion, a tremendously important aspect of human life and culture, but one which is not always studied or discussed in these terms. Intelligent, intelligent, knowledgeable, critical, rigorous, honest. Swift Hall is host to a conversation from the widest possible range of perspectives and interests in the study of religion's many manifestations, both past and present, all set within a great research university that is the University of Chicago, with its defining values of critical thinking and advancement of knowledge so that human life may flourish. Crescat scientia vita excolatur. Each of our graduates has contributed and will contribute to that flourishing. So we shall now proceed to honor the graduates of our three master's degree programs and the doctoral program. Will the AMRS graduates please stand? It is my pleasure to present you with a diploma you have earned. But first, you have to come up here. We now recognize the achievements of these graduates who tomorrow will be awarded the degree of Master of Arts in Religious Studies by the Board of Trustees of the University. These students have successfully completed at least nine courses and passed an oral exam with faculty on a piece of original research. In recognition of that accomplishment, while I present the diplomas, Professor Jeffrey Stackert, MA Program Director, will present each graduate with a Divinity School pin of the University of Chicago, as it is now your alma mater. Devin Jerome Crawford. Maham, Maham Akbal Haq. <laughs> Teresa John Mangalath. <laughs> Maria.
Riz Mishich. Adrian Nelson Talbot. Brennan Suzanne Yak. Please join me in congratulating the 2019 Master of Arts in Religious Studies graduates of the Divinity School. Will the MA graduates please stand? We now recognize the achievements of these graduates who tomorrow will be awarded the degree of Master of Arts in Divinity by the Board of Trustees of the University. These students have completed a two-year course of study introducing them to the substance and methods of academic inquiry in the subject of religion and its multiple manifestations. These graduates, through coursework, language study, independent research and extracurricular engagement, have attained a genuine breadth of acquaintance with the methods for the study of religion and fundamental knowledge in their chosen area of concentration. It is my pleasure to present you with the degree you have earned. And in recognition of this accomplishment, Professor Jeffrey Stackert, MA Program Director, will present each graduate with the Divinity School pin. Sarah Salah Aziz. Wayal Azmi. Lauren Michaela Beversluis. Drew Charles Craig Shaboyer. Junru Dong. Hamza Ahmed Dajan. Tucker Jonah Gregor. Marie Helmy. Peter Henry Hoekstra. <laughs> Johanna, Johanna Catherine Holbrook. <laughs> Christopher Iacovetti. Christian Mark Lopak. Nicholas William Lorenz. Elizabeth Estelle Martin. Amelia Parker. Austin Jeffers Pitts. Rebecca Ellen Rosenfeld. Nicholas A. Schiffrar. Hannah Joy Stork.
Anne-Marie Anya Urban. <laughs> Matthew Peter Vega. Aiden Wesley Walsh. <laughs> Sabrina Laurel Wandress. Please join me in congratulating the 2019 Master of Arts and Divinity graduates of the Divinity School. Will the MDiv graduates please stand? We now celebrate the accomplishments of these students who tomorrow will be awarded the Master of Divinity degree by the Board of Trustees of the University. These students have completed a demanding course of study towards professional competence in public religious leadership, including coursework across the Divinity School and the University dedicated courses in the significance of religious experience, community, and discourse, attention to the practice in the arts of ministry, and two attendant engagements in field education, and a senior ministry project and public presentation thereof that represents original research in the arts of ministry. They are trained for the profession of ministry. It is my pleasure to present you with the diploma you have earned. And in recognition of this accomplishment, Professor Cynthia Lindner, Director of Ministry Studies, will present each graduate with a Divinity School pin. Maher al -Hajj. <laughs> Nadan Cho. Chelsea Lee Cornelius. Robert W. Feeney. Margaret Mati Engel. Matthew Vaughn Johnson. <laughs> Eleanor Claire Ann Leach. <laughs> Sarah Bergen Lucia. Sarah Sophia Lytle. <laughs> Caleb Daniel Nyquist. <laughs> J.R. Hernandez Pinedo. Jack Paul Veach. Please join me in congratulating the 2019 Master of Divinity graduates. <laughs> Thank you.
It's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Sarah Fredericks, to deliver remarks. Prof professor Fredericks is assistant professor, as I've already said, really associate professor of environmental ethics and the director of the doctoral studies in the Divinity School, as well as an affiliated faculty member of the Program on the Global Environment and the Center for the Study of Gender and Sexuality. Her research focuses on sustainability, sustainable energy, and environmental justice. Professor Fredericks is the author of Measuring and Evaluating Sustainability, Ethics in Sustainability Indices, and numerous articles in a wide range of journals. She also serves as a co-editor of a book series, Religious Ethics and Environmental Challenges. Professor Fredericks' current project seeks to better understand the impact of climate change from a humanities perspective. She's working on a book about the ethical dimensions of experiencing and inducing environmental guilt and shame. And I know you're going to want to read this book when it appears, because having read the manuscript, I can tell you that it's important, particularly about climate change. So please join me in welcoming Professor Sarah Fredericks. Good afternoon. Congratulations, graduates. This weekend marks a tremendous set of accomplishments for all of you. You've helped make Swift Hall and the university what they are. You advance the academic study of religion and are going on to do amazing things, some of which we already know about and some of which are still unfolding. It has been an honor to work with many of you over the last few years and a regret that I didn't get the chance to work with all of you. I look forward to hearing about what you do next. As Dean Feigelson said earlier, it's also fitting to acknowledge others in this room and elsewhere who help make this day possible. Especially, I want to acknowledge all of the family and friends who are here and sending their well wishes from afar, without which, if your experience was anything like mine, the road to graduation would have been certainly longer and harder. After hearing uh, the Dean's remarks, you might think I'm going to talk about climate change today. And while I thought about it, I decided I would speak about something maybe a little bit more celebratory. We can talk about climate change later if you would like. One of the things that makes the academic study of religion intriguing to me is that it enables and indeed necessitates investigations of all sorts of dimensions of human life as well as their interconnection. Individuals and communities, rationality, belief, emotions, texts, material culture, rituals, institutions, law and ethics, myth, language, embodiment. The graduates of our programs embody many of these elements of the study of religion, and we take this diversity to be a strength of our school. Indeed, I think that if we focus on any one of these elements in total isolation from others, important knowledge will be lost. In addition to conceptual problems, we hinder the kinds of practical action that can be informed by our scholarship. And as a scholar of environmental ethics, that's particularly concerning to me. In my own field, some scholars focus so much on the rational analysis of rules of how humans came to be or how we should act. Maybe too much. The presumption seems to be that if we just identify the right rules, we will behave rightly. This focus on concepts has allowed very many intriguing insights to be developed about the relationship of humans and animals, the biosphere, uh, future generations, environmental injustice, etc. But these modes of ethics are, in my mind, woefully incomplete. It seems to me that they imply 
that if we get our rules right, if we put them on a poster in a classroom, in City Hall, in our religious space or our home, then suddenly we're going to have rightly ordered lives. We'll do the right thing. But when I see writing that presumes these kinds of things, I find myself asking a simple question. Have you met any people? <laughs> what about our conflicting desires, our laziness, our weak wills, or our attachments? What about social, political, and infrastructural systems that make it often impossible to live up to our ideals as individuals or as society? I find it most intriguing and important to think about how we don't live up to our ideals and how to practically and existentially deal with this fact. Ironically, I find that sometimes these questions of how we should deal with our failure or sin or attachment or limits, these religious questions are often left out of my field of study and I try to bring them back in, in a variety of ways. The challenges of a single-minded focus have also been on my mind a lot in the last year, as I've been talking with others about our programs at the Divinity School, especially the doctoral program. Here too, sometimes, maybe not as much as with some of my colleagues in my field, but I see a tendency toward the single-minded. In this case, the prioritization of the life of the mind. On the one hand, this is awesome. I don't think any of our graduates, current students, or faculty would have come to the Divinity School or made it to graduation if they or we didn't have interest in our fields of study and a desire to make this a priority in our lives. It's amazing to work at a place where the world of ideas is taken so seriously. Additionally, a certain amount of prioritization is necessary to do this work. One doesn't learn one or more languages, read complicated texts, write a term paper, complete a senior ministry project, or a dissertation without a lot of hard work and prioritization. It also makes sense that we as a community emphasize our acad academic life as this is what we have in common. So often when we see each other in the halls of Swift or on the quad after a summer break or just a few days holed up in the library, we're likely to ask each other, how are you? And we often expect and give an answer about our scholarship about how we've been wrestling with a text. We did one more section, we cleaned up those footnotes, or maybe we finally figured out an idea. All of this is great. It helps us advance our common pursuit. It also helps us maintain some boundaries to avoid overly personal questions or oversharing. But sometimes I'm concerned that the focus on academics in Swift, along with the rightful, incredible amount of time it takes to do our work can imply to members of our community that academics are all that's important and that the study of religion conceived in one, where, one narrow way or another is all that should be valued in one's identity, schedule, or decision making about one's future. I've seen some students wary of noting that they had a hobby or interests, or that they just took the night off. As if all that we faculty care about are your academics. And I think that kind of assumption is a little problematic. I think it can skew our conversations about our aspirations and our work together if that's the only message we hear. So I find myself on this day celebrating academic accomplishments, thinking a little bit about ourselves as whole people. Now, don't get me wrong, I hope that all of you, if, you're, if you wish, continue the work that you have done here in many creative ways. But that's not all I hope for you. I hope you also have meaningful relationships with individuals and communities. I hope you engage in meaning-making activities in a wide variety of ways. And I hope that you have relaxation and health and joy in your lives. 
Now, as someone who, as an academic, generally follows in the tradition of American pragmatism, I think that living, acting, and experiencing are ways that our values come to be articulated and refined. Thus, it rings false to me to say, on this day or any other, be more than an academic, be more than a scholar of religion, recognize your whole self. It seems that I should in some way live this out to have you experience a bit of what this means for me, though I probably need this lesson as much, if not more, as anyone in this room. So today I'd like to talk to you very briefly about one aspect of my life outside of the academy, quilting, in order to emphasize this point about being a whole person. Yes, I said quilting, Q U. I-L-T-I-N-G, a hobby often associated with elderly women and um, the olden days, whenever that was. This is a hobby where people make blankets or art um, by sewing small pieces of fabric together into a big piece, layering that together with some batting or fluff and another piece of fabric, and then stitching it together with thousands of tiny stitches. It's hard to communicate about something so visual, tactile, and embodied through words alone. So I've brought a piece to show you, which is big, but in this space, probably small. Colleagues? So my colleagues have offered to be my extra arms and hold it up. This is an unfinished project I'm working on, a modification of a pattern by Body Hunter entitled Celtic Solstice. I intentionally brought an unfinished project. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, in, I intentionally brought an unfinished project. All this white hanging off the edge will be trimmed off later to demonstrate that this part of my life is active and ongoing. It's not on the shelf or the bed, finished or past. I brought this one because frankly, it brings me delight. The colors are somehow energizing and calming to me at the same time. There's an interplay where circles are made of squares, rectangles, and triangles. Many of the pieces are formed of smaller pieces to add more depth to use up those last little bits of my favorite fabrics. To look at this piece is also um, a memory aid to me to remember the times of my life when I was working on it, whether alone in a meditative state, the times when my stitches were accompanied by the laughter of my friends or companions consoling each other. I also brought this one because it's big and complicated. It represents hundreds of hours of work, and to get these skills, probably thousands of hours. I've been quilting since I was about seven. Um, I brought this quilt and talk about quilting rather than talking about uh, many other aspects of being a whole person that I could talk about, because this is the part that's really about fun and joy and friendship. My academic work brings me amazing satisfaction too, and it's often fun, but it isn't everything. And it's okay to spend time, deep time, on other pursuits. Ladies, I know your arms are probably getting tired, so thank you um, very much. So, on this graduation weekend, I urge graduates in particular to remember and rejoice in your academic accomplishments. I also encourage you to attend to all the dimensions of yourself and community as you celebrate this weekend, to say goodbye to people who are important to you that you may not see as often in the future, to attend to your body, which Unfortunately, sometimes we neglect in the weeks running up to graduation. So eat well, sleep well, move your body. I encourage you to engage in your analog of quilting. You don't have to take up this hobby. 
I encourage you to explain your academic project to your friends and family and check in with your colleagues about how they finished up that last term paper, that tricky bit in their project or dissertation. As you move into your future, I urge you to continue to think capaciously about the academic study of religion in all those dimensions I mentioned earlier, while maintaining the other aspects of your life. Thank you. Dear Sarah, thank you for that those remarks, which are both joyful and wise. We now will present our new doctorands. Will the Doctor of Philosophy graduates please stand? This afternoon, we recognize graduates who tomorrow will be awarded the, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy by the Board of Trustees of the University. These doctorands have completed a rigorous course of study in one of the areas of specialization in the Divinity School, including extensive coursework, examinations in languages both modern and ancient, comprehensive written and oral qualifying examinations, very comprehensive examinations, and the research and writing of a dissertation that has been approved by a faculty committee in their field of study. They are trained as research scholars and educators in the academic study of religion. These doctorands have not only gone in pursuit of scientia, they have captured it. The PhD degree is a research degree only received when the candidate has made an original contribution to knowledge. We wish to recognize that by sending them forth with a gift from the Divinity School, the hood that they now have the right and privilege to wear, presented by the doctoral advisor, which uniquely marks them as Doctor of Philosophy graduates of the University of Chicago Divinity School. John Whitney Buckman, hooded by Professor William Schweiker, dissertation title, The Price of Solidarity, Adam Smith, Thomas Aquinas, and the Ethics of Exchange. James Robert Covington, hooded by Professor Margaret Mitchell, dissertation titled The Poetics of Translation in Greek Genesis and the Virtuous Plot. Daryl Scott Dale Ferguson, hooded by Professor William Schweiker, dissertation title, Capable Agents and Just Institutions, a Reconstruction of Paul Ricoeur's Ethical Aim Using Anthony Giddens' Theory of Structuration. Jesse DeGrado, hooded by Professor Simeon Chevelle, dissertation title, Authoring Empire, Intellectual Engagement with the Neo-Assyrian Empire in the Bible. Cameron Ferguson, hooded by Professor Margaret Mitchell, dissertation title, The Binding of Past to Present, A New Perspective on the Use of Paul in the Gospel of Mark.
William Ezekiel Goggin, hooded by Professor Francoise Meltzer. Dissertation title, Sacrifice, Economy, and Eschatology, Hegel and His French Critics. Timothy Gutmann, hooded by Professor Ahmed Al Shamsi. Dissertation title, Conscripting Traditions, Islam, Confucianism, Modernity. Michelle Harrington, hooded by Professor William Schweiker. Dissertation title, Laying Down One's Life, Autonomy in the Time of Medicalized Death. Lisa Lando Hedrick, hooded by Professor Kevin Hector. Dissertation title, Theology After the Problem of Intentionality, a Whiteheadian Corrective for Analytic Philosophy of Language. Aaron Thomas Hollander, hooded by professors Dwight Hopkins and Andreas Glaser. Dissertation title, The Multimediation of Holiness, Hagiography as Resistance in Greek Orthodox Theological Culture. Alexander Ong Shu, hooded by Professor Sarah Fredericks. Dissertation title, Practices of Scriptural Economy, Compiling and Copying a 7th Century Chinese Buddhist Anthology. Russell Paul Johnson, hooded by Professor Kevin Hector, dissertation title, Communication Ethics in Social Conflict, Nonviolent and Christian Perspectives. Michael Thomas Le Chevalier, hooded by Professor William Schweiker. Dissertation titled The Stain of Association and the Burden of Membership, Intellect Institutional Ethics in Paul Ricoeur and Catholic Social Thought. Robert John Porwall, hooded by Professor Wilhelmine Otten. Dissertation title, Parisian Pedagogies, the educational debate between Peter Abelard, Hugh of St. Victor, Peter Lombard, and John of Salisbury. Anna Amaris Rowe, hooded by Professor Sarah Fredericks. Dissertation title, Specters of Western Metaphysics, Christianity and Colonial Modernity in Early Modern Korea, 1876 to 1945. Oh. <laughs> 
Susan Christopher Shields, hooded by Professor Catherine Breckis. Dissertation titled Beyond Words, Reading the Bible in Antebellum Contexts. Sam Baron Shankoff, hooded by Professor James Robinson. Dissertation title, Sacramental Existence, Embodiment in Martin Buber's Philosophical and Hasidic Writings. David Kerman Tomlinson, hooded by Professor Daniel Arnold. Dissertation title, Buddhahood and Philosophy of Mind, Ratna Karashanti, Jnana Sri Mitra, and the Debate Over Meta Mental Content, Akara. Please join me in congratulating the 2019 Doctor of Philosophy graduates of the Divinity School. Before we depart, I would like to avail myself of this opportunity to address a few words to you whom we honor and recognize today as you stand at the threshold of a new phase of your lives. Anthropologists call such moments liminal from Latin limen for threshold. And the great University of Chicago anthropologist, we never miss an opportunity for self-promotion, Victor Turner dedicated his scholarly life to the rituals that accompany such moments, rituals of what he called betwixt and between. Our ceremony today is such a high, highly formal performance marked by ceremonial entry into and exit from a quasi-sacred space, repetition of ritual formulas, and of course the wearing of liturgical vestments. Those vestments, indeed many aspects of this ritual, have roots stretching down into the Middle Ages. Your gowns, hoods, caps, tassels, and titles have all accumulated meaning over the centuries. Some of that meaning you will hear expressed in the, formula, in the formula that the president of the university will invoke over you tomorrow, welcoming you to membership in, quote, an ancient and honorable company of scholars. Today's ceremonies do not merely transfer to you a transcript or a professional credential. They usher you into a community. That community includes everyone who has ever from when universities first appeared in the 12th century until today, everyone who has ever experienced the discipline of a faculty, sometimes a very severe discipline to be sure, and emerged with a degree of master or doctor. Of course, not all those degrees have been from the University of Chicago, just the best ones. But all have shared the common ideal of subjecting opinion, prejudice, authority, dogma, and expedience to the test of critical thought. As you know, that test is not an easy one. The Greeks used to say that one must suffer into learning. Pathein, mathein in Greek, it rhymes so it sounds better. Many resources, material, intellectual, and emotional, are required to join this honorable company you have entered. One among those resources is time by which I mean not only the considerable time it takes to get an advanced degree, but more importantly, the special sensibility towards time that the kind of thinking you have been doing these past years requires. The ability to set aside the constant calls of the world around us, to step out of the demands of the immediate present, and to dwell in the longer term of an impossibly difficult problem or complex field. Today's ceremony marks your departure from this special space of thought, 
a space in which even the architecture constantly reminds us that the time scales of our inquiry and research are somehow different from those of the everyday world. There's a reason why Gothic is the architecture of so many great American universities. And no matter what road you take when you process out of these doors in a moment, you will enter a world whose clocks tick to a different rhythm, a world where the rumbling of the present feels louder and sometimes threatens to fill the space of thought. I'm not going to delay your entry into that world any further, but as you enter it, I remind you only of the obligation that comes with being part of our ancient and honorable company. You, your families, your faculty, indeed society as a whole, all have made enormous sacrifices so that you could step outside of time and gain the power to question, and if necessary, to transform the convictions and certainties of the present about religion. As you step out of today's ritual and back into the flow of worldly time, wearing your medieval gowns, mortarboards, and hoods, your obligation is never to forget that power and to use it whenever and wherever the world needs it most. As for me, it's not my obligation, it's my honor, my privilege, and my joy to thank you for having chosen to join with us in our community of inquiry, to congratulate you on the behalf of the Divinity School and the University of Chicago, and to lead our procession back into a world that awaits and needs you. Thank you, and good luck. <laughs>